So if you look from the top, you can see the spine of the scapula. You can see, you know, she's just got a little bit of atrophy on the left versus the right. Okay? Um, the spine of the scapula, you got supraspinatus in the front, infraspinatus in the back. And if you just get in the habit of palpating that, you get an impression of what's normal. Now, the supraspinatus tendon inserts on, let's do it on this side so you can see it, on the greater tubercle. And that tendon is often injured. That's something we recognize a lot more. And if you flex it to tighten it just a little bit and then squeeze on it, that's usually when you get a response. Hers doesn't hurt. In a minute, I'll show you one that it does. Okay? But the main thing is to start with the feet. And if you think it's left, start with right. If you think it's front, start with back. So we would start with our examination. Uh, this dog has a front leg lameness. We'll start in the back. Uh, we're just looking for muscle symmetry and confirmation. You know, it's always a good idea to make sure they don't have any neural deficits. And then. I like to start at the toes, and I, mainly because I miss problems there, especially in greyhounds, like with corners and stuff. Look at the bottom of the feet, palpate, don't miss a broken toenail, don't miss something easy that's going to make you look like an idiot. And then don't forget to range of motion the individual joints. You're, you know, you're feeling for swelling, pain, this is usually the, the best test. Now, it also tells you whether or not this dog has a foot fetish. Some dogs don't like their feet messed with, and even though we know the problem's not back here, um, stand up still. And then, always use the opposite leg for uh, a cheat sheet. So, uh, the first thing you're going to do is palpate the insides. Uh, scoot up so Wesley can get that. Can it, Stella? For the back legs, I like to palpate the inside. First thing I do, I'm just kind of petting them, getting them used to it. I'm feeling for muscle atrophy. I go down the inside of the leg. I'm feeling for that speed bump associated with the chronic cruciate. That's not there. Um, you know, we're, this is more where we're just kind of getting her comfortable. Feel the... Achilles tendon, Shelties have those pop off, so that's all good. And then, like I said, we go down, we start with the foot. I like to go through each toe. And range of motion those. You know, make sure there's nothing interdigital. And then palpate each individual. I mean, just feel for swelling. This is where I like to always feel them both at the same time. Okay? You know, we want to go up the joint and check for muscle asymmetry. And then I like to do painful things last. So I like to try to, I'm bad about missing joint arthropathy, so uh, polyarthritis. So when you feel joints, you always want to try to do those at the same time. This dog's left elbow is bigger than his right, okay? For me to just feel this left elbow and say, oh, that one's big, it would be harder if I didn't have the other side. So like I feel the right one, I mean, it's like, obviously, there's a difference. Uh, there's so many different breeds and hair and all that. Uh, it's hard to say. So, we, I, I kind of do all of the joints. Uh, and then I come back to the back legs and finish my exam there. Um, and then uh, always do range of motion. Okay, good range of motion. And again, left to right. Um, you know, I try, like I said, I try not to do painful things first. As far as the knee, I've already felt it for stifle effusion and test the patella and extension because that's when it's going to luxate most easily, not inflection. And then we're going to talk about with cruciates and I'll show you, you know, hyperextensional knee pain. That is a big test for me for partial cruciates. So I always test that. And then for hip disease, I think Stella's hips are okay. But, um, you know, 
hyperextend, hyperflex. This is the one that usually, she didn't like that on the left, does she? That, stand up from the top. See, she didn't mind that. She may have a little, little discomfort in that left hip. She didn't have any hip for you. All right, so, you know, low, low back, sacrum. A lot of times, uh, you know, in SI Lux, you can take a little dog and move this box. Uh, cats, um, a lot of times that's how I can diagnose an SI Lux or pelvic fracture, but that feels good, so no, no problems there. Again, muscle symmetry, you know, as far as her spine, look, girl, oh, this is a good girl. Um, you know, you know, check them for back pain. I'm not going to zero in on her just for the exam, just, but, you know, you, she's not a neuro patient. You know, you want to range of motion in their head, you know, left and right. I mean, I can already know she's an elbow case, but see if there's resistance one way or the other. And then front legs, we've talked about, you know, kind of, we're going to go down and we're going to, you know, do the same thing. And we're going to palpate, on, it. Come on. we're going to palpate her for asymmetry. So everything's symmetrical. We're going to go through the toe exam, the bottom of the foot. We're checking the toenails, make sure none of them are broken. All that's good. Um, and then again, do the other foot. But we want to test range of motion and see if there's any difference, left versus right. We want to see if one ankle drops more than the other. We would have already seen that, I think. But the, I think the problem in that elbow, it's thicker than the other elbow. So I'm going to skip the elbow and go up and feel, you know, I'm feeling supraspinatus, like I said. Pushing on that supraspinatus, getting the habit of that. It's usually a muscular tendinous injury. Flex it, push on it. The biceps tendon is right here. You can push on that biceps tendon. Um, I'm not. A, I don't. I don't have a lot of biceps tendon palpation results. Stand up, girlfriend. And then shoulder. This is a common mistake. Let's, let's look at her this way, Wesley, from the side. Okay? When I test shoulder, I do it like this. Okay? When I test... Not like this. Here's what everybody does. They go like this. Okay? Get a reaction. Okay? So, was that shoulder or was that elbow? That's the problem. So, try to come up here. Test the... Sh isolate the shoulder. And now, I'll test the elbow. Hyperextension. And then here's the, Wesley, look at this from the front. I like to get right around here, right there, and push for pain, okay? That's where those coronoids like to, that's where I get coronoid pain. Now, I was taught that you supinate and pronate, and you, you, you move that radial head, and a lot of times they're painful. But I don't find that to be very reliable. Easy, girl. Juiced everywhere. All right, so, but what I do find, stand up again, come on, Stella. What I do find reliable is, well, first we've got to do range of motion. Uh, we've done it here. Now we're going to do range of motion here. We're going to test this left shoulder extension. Flexion, extension, she didn't really hurt. So that doesn't mean she doesn't have elbow dysplasia. Now, I like to get right in here and then. Oh, she didn't like that. Oh, see, right, right there. And then always test left or right. Yeah. I'm doing the same thing on the right, not getting that much. Oh, she didn't like that. That's it. Okay, so, and then. After you do something that hurts, you can see if it exacerbates their lameness. Um, Monica, what did I forget? Oh, the other thing I want to say, you know, i got other... I'm just trying to get it all in one video. I mean, you can test cruciates like this. Probably better to get them on their side. Let's see them on their side. Sit on there. Sit on there. Good girl. So... 
Um, I think one of the problems with uh, people trying to do tests for cruise ships is they get too far away and they try to do it like this. I mean, you want to find the patella, find the tibial tuberosity. This is straight patellar tendon. Okay, you want this finger on the tip of the tuberosity and then the fibular head is right here. So that's where, that's where you want to be, patella, and then you want to be right back here in the back of the gastroc. So, and then put them in a normal range of motion, test for drawer. Test for drawer inflection. Sometimes an anterior medial band will have a little drawer inflection. But again, hyper extensional knee pain, that's the key. Now, cranial tibial thrust, when you test for that, Okay, you're trying to see, um, you know, the tibial tuberosity thrust forward. Now, the, the tricker is that if they have an Achilles tendon injury, look how you're, 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 you're stressing the Achilles. So if the dog reacts when you do that, and don't be assuming it's necessarily cruciate. Make sure that it's not this uh, Achilles mechanism. In Shelties, you'll see the superficial digital flexor tendon pop over to the side. So I, I think I've got a case of that I can show. But this you want to make sure that super this isn't swollen and the key is to feel left versus right. Always feel the opposite side.